Number 69. Unreasonable results. A commercial airplane has an airspeed of 280 meters per second due east and flies with a strong tailwind. It travels 3,000 kilometers in a direction 5 degrees south of east in 1.5 hours. Letter A. What was the velocity of the plane relative to the ground? All right. So here I have a little picture. All right. We have the velocity of the plane relative to the air, right? Uh, it doesn't say that directly, but it says a commercial airplane has an airspeed. So therefore, the plane's speed relative to the air is the same thing as airspeed. So the velocity of the plane relative to the air is 280 meters per second, and it's flying uh, with that velocity due east. And it says that the plane travels now 3,000 kilometers in 1.5 hours at an angle of 5 degrees south of east. All right, so this, this, they're basically giving us a velocity, but without giving us a velocity. Remember that velocity is simply the distance divided by time or displacement divided by time. Okay, so in order to find the velocity of the plane relative to the ground, all we have to do is just calculate the velocity from this information, right? Because it covered 3,000 kilometers relative to the ground. That's a ground measure, okay? So what I can do is this. Let me just plug in the numbers as you see them. So 3,000 kilometers per 1.50 hours. And when we do that math, we simply get should be 2,000. So 3,000 divided by 1.5, and we get 2,000. All right, so this is 2,000 kilometers per hour. Now we can leave it here, or we can convert it into meters per second. So let me just do that, because the other speed of the airplane is in meters per second. So to convert that into meters per second, kilometers on the bottom, meters on the top, 1,000 meters for every one kilometer. They go bye-bye. Then hours I got to put on the top because I need them to cancel. And I know the relation to minutes, so one hour is 60 minutes. And then I can do, I'm trailing off here, I don't know why my handwriting is going up at an angle, but it is. So one minute, 60 seconds, so the minutes cancel. So now this would give me meters per second. So 2,000 times 1,000 divided by essentially 3,600. So this is 556, because I got around 556 meters per second. So that is the velocity. Okay, and now more specifically, let me write it like this. So let me actually erase this given information over here. I'm just gonna write it nice and neatly. So this is the velocity of the plane relative to the Earth, okay, is 556 meters per second. Now that's flying. Okay, no pun intended. So anyway, now letter B, it says to calculate the magnitude, whoops, hold on one second, calculate the magnitude and direction of the tailwind's velocity. Okay, so it says calculate the velocity of the tailwind, but they don't mention in with respect to what or relative to what. Therefore, when they don't mention relative to what, always assume it's relative to the Earth. So what we're looking to find here is we're looking to find the velocity of the uh, tailwind, which I'm calling A for air, for air, okay? So the velocity of the air relative to the Earth. Now, in order to find that, by considering my formula over here on the right-hand side, the relative velocity formula, I would then need to know the velocity of the air relative to the plane, right? Because that's the third object in the problem, plus then the velocity of the plane, plane relative to the Earth. All right, so can I find this? Do I have the information I need? Well, I do, right? Here's this vector. That's the velocity of the plane relative to the Earth. So I have that, that's a check, okay? And I need the velocity of the air relative to the plane. Well, they gave me the velocity of the plane relative to the air. So I actually can find this because remember, I would just have to negate the value. Recall that the V, uh, that the, I'll put it over here on the right-hand side, that the velocity of AB is equal to the negative of BA. Okay, perfect. So I know I can sum these up, but remember, you can't just sum up the values, you gotta sum up the components. So this would be all in the X direction, excuse me, all in the X direction, or all in the Y direction, it doesn't matter, all right? But that being said, what I wanna do is create a component table. Why? It organizes my thoughts. Okay, so I have my X components, my Y components, let me write in the vectors here, or let me write the VAP first. So the velocity of the air relative to the plane, then the velocity of the plane relative to the air, excuse me, relative to the earth, and then when I sum those up, I get the velocity of the air relative to the earth. 
Okay, so let's find the components of each. Let's first work with uh, VAP. So I know VPA, right? So just remember that if VPA, this is easy because it's a purely X directional component. I don't have to do any trig here. So VPA, right, in the X direction is equal to, and it's positive, 280, right? Therefore, VAP in the X direction should be negative 280. All right, so that's my value. That's going to get plugged in here, negative 280. And that's zero for Y because there is no Y component. Now let's work with the velocity of the plane relative to the air. And that does have a directional uh, angle to it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let me create a new set of axes so we don't get confused with all the colors. So let me create it here. Okay, let me just simply draw that in. So we get this vector, right? It's at five degrees south of <clears throat> south of east. And we calculated it to V VPE is 556. Okay, so setting up the components now. Here's the, it's a little long. Here's the X component, right? And that is positive. And the Y component here would be uh, negative, right? Because it's pointing down. So negative VY. Okay, so let's set it all up. Let's first talk about how we're going to calculate X. I know the hypotenuse value. I know this angle. I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle. Therefore, I'm going to use cosine. So the right-hand side. So cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So cosine of 5 will be equal to the velocity of the plane relative to the Earth in the x direction divided by the hypotenuse value of 556. So the velocity of the plane relative to the Earth in the x direction should simply equal cosine of 5, plug it into your calculator, times 556. So this is 500, I got around, three sig figs, 554. Okay, plug that into your table for x, 554. Now let's do the same thing for my y value. All right, let's do that. Um, hmm, yeah, let me just erase all this conversion stuff right here, right? I mean, I'll leave it. I got enough room. Just might get a little messy. So I'm going to do it right over here. So um, I know the hypotenuse. I know the angle. I'm looking for the side opposite of that angle. Therefore, I'm going to use sine. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite side of the hypotenuse. So now the sine of 5 degrees will equal the negative velocity of the plane relative to the Earth in the y direction all over the hypotenuse of 556. All right. So the negative velocity of the plane relative to the Earth in the y direction should equal so sine of 5 times 556, we get a value of 48.5, 48.5. And now remember, just carry the negative sign on over to the other side. All right, so let's erase that from this side, and I'll plug it there. Okay, so that value, now plug it into your table. So we get negative 48.5. And now all I have to do is sum up now the x and the y values, all right, to get, my res uh, to get the components of my resultant vector. So we have 554 minus 280. Okay, so that's 274, 274. And then I got 0 minus 48.5, which is negative 48.5. So these are the components of the resultant. All right, let's draw those components upper left-hand side. So here's my little coordinate system. Let me draw the x value, right? It said that it's going to be 274, so it should go all the way out there. All right, 274. Then I have a small y component. It's pointing negatively, meaning it's pointing down. Okay, and that has a value of 48.5 or negative 48.5. And then the resultant vector will now be from the start to the finish. Yeah, let me make it a little neater. Okay, that's good enough. So this resultant vector um, is the velocity of the air relative to the Earth. So how do we find it? Well, simple, Pythagorean's theorem, right? I gotta find the hypotenuse and I know both sides. Okay, I'm just gonna use a reworked formula. Remember the resultant is equal to the same as the velocity of the air relative to the earth in this problem, which is the square root of the sum of all the x values squared plus the sum of all the y values squared. So simply just plug in the numbers here. This is gonna be 274 squared, right? Plus a negative 48.5 squared. And now just solve. So velocity of the air relative to the Earth will be equal to square root of 274 squared plus negative 48.5 squared. Careful with your parentheses. It should be 
278. So we got 200, oh no, yeah, 278, and that is meters per second. So that is the velocity of the air relative to the Earth. All right. Now that's blowing. That that that's definitely a, a very strong wind. Uh, I don't I don't know if the winds reach that uh, great even in the upper levels of the atmosphere there. Although those winds are higher than what we experience on Earth, uh, but that's definitely quite large. So um, the only thing left is I have to calculate then the angle because it says direction, right? So that's the tailwind. That's the velocity of the wind. And now if you go back to the picture on the upper left, I'm going to calculate my theta there. So I can use tangent, right? Opposite over adjacent. So tan theta will equal my y value of, and just do the absolute value in here. You don't need the negative signs, 48.5 all over 274. Since I'm running out of room, I'm just going to do all the math at once. So do inverse tan uh, of 48.5 divided by 274. And it comes out to be about a, an angle of 10 degrees, right? 10.0. 10 point, 10 and that makes sense. It should be a small angle because x is much larger than the y value. Okay, so stating this fully, the velocity of the air relative to the Earth is 278 meters per second at 10 degrees, right, 0 .0, 10 degrees, eh, let me make that a little neater, 10.0 degrees south of, south of east, okay? That is the answer there, all right? Now it says, what is unreasonable about, what is unreasonable about both of these velocities? Well, what are they, what both? Well, first... Uh, first, I didn't even mention, but the airspeed, right, of the plane relative to the Earth, meaning this value right here that I just circled. That's tremendous. I mean, that the speed of sound is 330 meters per second. So this is going almost twice the speed of sound, almost Mach 2. Some planes might be able to... Um, some, some planes might be able to achieve that, like fighter jets, but not a commercial airplane. All right, so that, that's, that's insane. That's unreasonable. Um, also, like I said, the wind speed is just insanely great. Um, it, it, I don't know if we've ever recorded winds that uh, would be 278 meters per second. So they're both unreasonable. Now, it asks which premise is unreasonable then. Well, we have to ask ourselves, how did we get the value of 200, uh, 556 meters per second? By the way, if you get answers that are this unreasonable, you probably want to go back and check your work. Um, the reason why I'm pretty confident that the work is correct is because... The problem is about being unreasonable, all right? But if I did get results like this on a normal problem, I'd start to question myself. Maybe something went wrong somewhere because it just doesn't make uh, too much logical sense here. The numbers are just way off. But the numbers are right in this problem, like I say, because it's a problem about being unreasonable. Anyway, either this, the distance that they recorded uh, was too large. Maybe there was an error in, in the uh, uh, measurement apparatus, or the time value is too short. One of the two, I don't know, but one of those two premises would be unreasonable. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe. Tell all your friends about us, all your classmates, and uh, that would be awesome. All right, until next time.